watching for and looking for. No, just making sure he was standing good. He was perfect in there. Oh, well, bad audio. Really, uh, really bad. Yeah. I think he said that's the best thing they can do. Some of us folks are, are just getting here. How is it to, going on two weeks now, been here, and what have you seen from Chrome? Uh, Chrome's been great. He uh, seems to be handling the track good, and uh, you know he's he's doing his thing. He uh, loves the train and he loves loves what he does, so he makes our job easy. What is it about the you guys go out to the track, the, the bigness of Belmont compared to kind of the friendly confines of uh, Pimlico? How is that different, and, and how do you try to get the horse acclimated to that? Uh, the horse acclimated better than I did. Uh, it was a little intimidating at first, but I'm getting used to it now. Does it make any difference, the wide, the wideness, the expanse of the horse to keep it focused? No, I don't think so. You know, he's got his lead changes down and everything. So, uh, he's doing really good on this track. What do you do now going into preparation going into the race? I'll school him tomorrow morning in the paddock and gallop him and then jog on race day. How much have you talked about strategy with Victor and... How involved are you in you know, how the race may play out, especially in the early seasons? Uh, we'll let him run out of the gate, and uh, you know if they if they're going too slow up front, he'll be on the lead. If you know somebody wants to go, that would be great too, just to be able to track him. But we'll leave that up to Victor. He done everything right so far. A lot of great horses have lost the Belmont just because of you know, moving too soon, sometimes it's jockey error, sometimes it's just early pace pressure. What are you guys talking about with Victor in terms of, you know, waiting and then waiting some more in terms of how to time when you want him to push the button because of how deceivingly big this track is? Well, it helps that Victor's been riding here all week. Uh, hopefully, uh, I'm sure they're going to take a few different runs at him like they did at Pimlico. Uh, as long as he doesn't get in any traffic problems, uh, I think I don't think it'll, you know, be a problem for him. As long as you know, he's just like you said, he can't move too early on him. Just got to sit as long as he can. Alan, just for the record, is everything still a go with the nasal strip? Yes. Do you expect that to become popular? No. <laughs> <laughs> he's the only horse in our barn that wears it. Yeah, I don't think anybody else in the race. Is yeah, I don't think so either. Well, will you be looking? You, you're with him every day. How's he? Yeah. How much is he grown and matured, you think, in the last five weeks through this triple crown period? Oh, he's definitely matured. Uh, he's He handles everything really well. You know, he's kind of a ham in front of the cameras. He's, uh, he's, I couldn't ask for anything more from this horse. He's just, everything from here on out is a bonus. You know, he's already, uh, exceeded our expectations. Uh, it's just been an amazing ride, and I just thank God that we get to train a horse like that. Have you noticed any changes in him in the last few weeks? Since the uh, he put on some weight. You know, he's, he's getting strong, or stronger. He's uh, hasn't missed a note in, uh, since he's been on this road, so he's uh, handling everything very well. Uh, it's been great for my dad, you know, at this stage in his career. He, he deserves it. He's really happy. The whole family is. What about you? Uh, for me, it's been great. I'm enjoying the ride. What would a win mean? It'd mean a triple crown for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just amazing, you know. It hadn't been done in 36 years, and hopefully we can get it done. Alan, have you guys looked... At like any old tapes of old Belmonts, Belmont Stakes, just to see what other horses have done, other strategies, what seems to win here, and, and you know, is it a front runner, is it a closer? Just done any research that way? Yeah, um, it, you'd think being a mile and a half that it would favor closers, but it really doesn't. You know, I think, I think it, uh, his running style, the tactical speed he has, is going to help. Uh, though he's got a target on his back, they'll be going after him. Uh, they'll, they'll, uh, if he make, if, if Crow moves, they're going to move right with him. You know, they're not going to. Uh, nothing's going to come easy.
Perry's he, he's a very nice man. He's just quiet. You know, he doesn't say a whole lot. Unlike Steve, he says a lot. <laughs> we love him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, he mapped out a trail for this horse, and uh, it's actually worked to a T, so it's kind of amazing. Yeah. It, well, it's, you know, it's hard. How do you map out a trail for the Kentucky Derby when he's two years old, you know? Just things usually don't work out like that. Um, yeah, I think it might be a little bit stronger field, fresh horses. You know, um, it's going to be a really tough race. You know, I, they're all tough, but I think this one could be the toughest of them all. I think. You had said when you arrived that you were most afraid of ride on curling. Yeah, uh, right on Curlin's right next to me, and he's training very well. Uh, Christophe Clement's horse looks really good on the track. Uh, I think those are my two main competitors in the race. Alan, with the starting gate right in front of the stands and what should be close to, if not a record crowd, what will you be looking for from Chrome? in and around the starting you know I, he has a tendency to rock a little bit what will you be watching for with him in the gate i just uh i told the, the gate crew that, that you know as long as his feet are square and he's got his head in the v that that's the main concern alan could you talk about the addition of the nasal strip and what you feel it has done for uh, i don't know if it's done anything for the horse to be honest with you uh the owners wanted to put it on so i put it on Six races ago? Yeah. Do you use it for other horses? No, I don't use it on any other horses. Now there is, it was like nine or ten, but it happened. Do you remember watching the first Valley Dark Belmar? I remember watching it and just, uh, you know, wanting to be Steve Cawthon. <laughs> you know, that was, uh, for him to do that at his age was quite amazing. Where did you, was that at you at home? Or? Yeah, in San Mateo. You had a big day yesterday in your personal life. How does it feel to be a grandfather? Ah, uh, it's awesome. Oh. So happy. Congratulations. Yeah, Logan. Are you missing home as focused as you are here? Are you wanting to get home for them? Yeah, I definitely want to get home and see him. Alan, when you said it was a little bit intimidating being here at first, what was it about the place that you... Just the sheer size of it. You know, when you walk out for the first time and see that massive racetrack, it's like, wow. You know, never been, you know, like... This is the biggest track in the country, a mile and a half, and your horse looks like an ant on the other end of the, you know, the track. So, yeah, that's just the sheer size of it. Definitely need binoculars. Yeah, for sure. How much pressure do you feel? Do you feel like you have to win? No, I don't feel like I have to win. The horse has got nothing to prove. You know, it's uh, we're just happy to be here.